Welcome, this is 49A6 and uh, this is the physicality of simple harmonic motion. We know that mass has an effect and we know spring constant has an effect, but what kind of effect do they have? And so we're going to look at the physicality of the situation. So here we have our visualization, we have the mass on a spring in its equilibrium position and we imagine moving it to the right and then letting it go and it oscillates backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and we know that the acceleration at any given position is equal to minus k over m times x the position and we just figured out actually that the acceleration at any position is equal to minus omega squared x we just worked that out like in the last section. And so we can put these things together and so just briefly I can say minus k over m times x is equal to omega squared x and of course the x's disappear or minus omega squared x and the negative signs disappear. So I get k over m is equal to omega squared. So omega is the angular frequency it's not how many complete cycles it makes in one second it's how many radians how many sixths of a cycle does it make in one second and I expect a higher frequency with a bigger spring constant and that's what I'm getting the case on top and I expect a lower frequency with the bigger mass because there's more inertia and mass is on the bottom which is what I'm expecting so good. What I didn't foresee is that it wouldn't be linear it's actually a squared relationship. So I see that okay k over m is equal to omega squared. Put it another way omega is equal to the square root of k over m. Um, okay. Now if I want to talk about the Ang the, the period well I know uh, um, uh, well I know that the uh, uh, period is how long it takes to do one complete cycle and that is going to be the period is equal to the number of radians in one complete cycle which is 2 pi over the angular velocity how many cycles a second I make this is going back to our analogy this is like saying that the time would be equal to our distance of our velocity remember velocity equals our distance over our time so our time equals our distance over our velocity it's the same thing the distance is like the two pi radians in one complete cycle and the velocity is like the angular frequency well the angular uh, velocity which is which is the omega so then if I take that I can say well t is equal to 2 pi over the square root of k over m we don't like triple deckers so let's rearrange this will be 2 pi times the square root of m over k Ooh. so when I'm talking about frequency I have k over m and when I'm talking about period I have m over k isn't that confusing well yeah but I'm not gonna just remember this like it's a Harry Potter uh, incantation I'm gonna think about these things and if I'm dealing with frequency I expect k to be on top and if I'm dealing with period I expect m to be on top so so it's not magic but there's, there's physics behind these things um, this looks rather like for a pendulum if you've done pendulum for a pendulum you get 2 pi square root of L over G just by the way it's, it's a similar format similar form um, okay let's let's play with this so let's look at some questions so we say what's the relationship links oscillation period well that's going to be the T where the spring constant that's going to be K in a spring mass system well there's going to be an M there as well notice no letters there's no there's nothing to indicate that K is the spring constant that's you got to walk in with that knowledge and well I know 
that t is equal to 2 pi square root of, do you remember it? It's going to be m over k, bigger the mass, bigger the period, bigger the mass, the slower the effect, bigger the period. And so, hmm, okay, so I've got to do some playing around here. So t is equal to 2 pi root m times 1 over root k. Now that might, mathematically I've done nothing, but I've done a lot in terms of my perception. That's what I'm looking for. That's that, that vertical axis. And this is the other thing I'm trying to relate. And it's not on the horizontal axis, but there's something like it on the horizontal axis. And this stuff in the middle is constant. So let the stuff in the middle equal 1. Why not? I'm going to go t, and I'm going to go 1, uh, I'm going to go k. And k is your independent variable, so let's that, let that equal 0, and let it equal 4, and let it equal 9, because they're good numbers. So if k equals 0, then t is going to be a very big number. And if k equals 4, 1 over the square root of 4 is 1 over a, a 2, which is 0 0.5. And if k equals 9, that's 1 over the square root of 9, which is 1 over 3, which is 0 0.33. And if I didn't leave myself much room here, did I? But if I plot t versus k, t versus k, yeah, let's have a look. When I have 0, this is up to infinity. And when this is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, I'm at a half there. And when I'm at 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, I'm there. So I can see that that graph is going like that. And that looks to me like A. So uh, this level, I don't expect you to necessarily... You might not need to draw this graph, but if in doubt, draw it. Notice what I did. I rearranged the equation to get the two parameters I wanted to look at by themselves. Um, I let the, the constants in the middle just be equal to 1. Why not? And then I just did a quick table to kind of look at these things. I picked nice, convenient numbers. And I drew myself a little graph. It's a whole bunch of skills involved in knowing the equation and what you can do with it. The next thing is a spring and block system oscillates with simple harmonic motion. The spring has a spring constant of 8. So k is equal to 8 newtons for every meter. The block has a mass. So the mass is equal to 32 kilograms. The block is displaced 3 meters. So my x is equal to 3 meters and it says to the left of the equilibrium position so that would be minus 3 meters when the time t is equal to 0 seconds oh that's interesting not that interesting but just by the way rather than doing that I'm doing that so it's a minus cosine. It's, it's not. It's not the end of the world, but it's just. It's just there by the by. Um, what is the period of the system after the block is released? So I want to find my period. So I say, oh well, hold on. My period is equal to two pi root m over k, which equals two pi root m m thirty two over my k. My k is 8, which equals 2 pi root 3 eighths of 24, 4 eighths of 32. So t is equal to 2 pi times 2, which equals 4 pi seconds. Roughly speaking, about 12, 13, maybe 14 seconds, something like that. Uh, 4 pi seconds is there. A couple of things. We often leave constants in our answers, so don't be surprised if you see that. 
And then the second thing is we often, certainly in my classes, we often give you information that is just irrelevant, just to see what you do with it. If I only give you the things you need, all you have to do is just, it's easy to find the equation. But if I give you extra stuff that's not important, are you visualizing so that you know it's not important? Or are you madly looking for an equation that has this displacement in it? So it's deliberate, that's, that's deliberate. It's teachers, so watch out for it, okay. So there we have it.